CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome to the divisional playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax Live. We've got the Cincinnati Bengals and the Tennessee Titans. Titans making their third straight playoff appearance. Cincinnati coming off its first playoff win in 31 years. That 26-19 victory over Las Vegas on Saturday, ending the postseason drought. Derrick Henry. Ready to go. Tennessee will have the football. Cincinnati won the toss. We're underway from Nashville. And out to the 25-yard line. Before we get things started on offense for Tennessee, let's check in with Evan Washburn. Well, and as this Titans offense takes the field and the return of Derrick Henry occurs, it's the final puzzle piece for this offense. And they haven't been fully together since week six of the season. That's the last time you had Henry, Jones, Brown, and this entire starting offensive line on the field together. Brian Tannehill, the one guy who's made it through all 18 games, said it's really been the last three weeks in practice that's got the confidence set for this huge game, fellas. And Evan and Trent, they won three in a row to end the regular season. They did not turn it over in any of those games. First play from scrimmage. Play action. Tannehill fires. Intercepted. Picked on the play by Jesse Bates. And just like that, Cincinnati takes over. Well, just when everyone thought that Derrick Henry was going to be the first one to touch the ball, Jesse Bates did not fall for it. The linebackers came up on the play-action pass, but Bates was eyeballing Tannehill the entire way, jumps in front of Julio Jones to get the interception. Ryan Tannehill had been playing near-perfect football over the last stretch of the regular season. Interceptions were an issue earlier in the season. He finished with 14 during the year and Cincinnati has got it a first and ten at the Tennessee 42. Burrow out of the gun. Fake the handoff. Burrow spins and he's dropped. A sack at the 45 to Nico Autry, the first man to greet him. Jeffrey Simmons got in there as well. This front is very talented that Joe Burrow is dealing with here this afternoon last five games for burrow 13 touchdowns and no picks well and you consider prior to that he was leading the nfl in interceptions with 14 so when they needed him to dial in and not turn the ball over he's done an excellent job that's what got him into this position right now he set franchise records across the board throwing the football this season for cincinnati in his second year joe burrow has been joe cool second and 13 burrow Underneath, catch made by Mixon, turns it upfield, dishes out punishment. Mixon works the sideline, and he's out of bounds. David Long missed, and then Mixon made him pay to the tune of 19. Good job by Burrow, not trying to push the ball upfield, hitting the check down to Mixon, and, and a terrible job of tackling by Long as he comes up and just tries to use his shoulder instead of wrapping him up. Mixon's not going to have any of that as he bounces to the outside and picks up the first down. Cincinnati driving after the Tannehill turnover. They are inside the Tennessee 25. Nixon remains in the backfield. He gets the call. Give him a gain of one forward progress. Tennessee's defense prepared for Joe Mixon going up the middle. Offensively for Cincinnati, the numbers are not eye-popping, but... They did score consistently, averaged 27 points per game, good for seventh in the league, highly talented group of skill position players. Well, you said it, Ian. You've got Joe Mixon, who is top five in, in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. You have Jamar Chase, top five in receiving yards. The numbers that Joe Burrow was able to put up, it's going to be tough against this defense that doesn't like the blitz. They bring pressure with mainly their four guys up front. Incredible turnaround from Zach Taylor and his coaching staff. Incomplete, but Dupree with the pressure on Joe Burrow as he was trying to hit Mixon. Defensively for Tennessee, this is a much improved group from last year to this year. Jeffrey Simmons took a step forward. They will put pressure on the quarterback. The addition of Zach Cunningham has given them a different dimension defensively. Came over from Houston and Kevin Byard, an all-pro season on that back line. 
And really, Ian, you said it. It's this defensive line with Autry and Simmons, their ability to put pressure in the middle, and then you change up things on the outside. So line up five so it looks like you're going to pressure. Then just like on the last down, one guy drops out and causes confusion and protection. This is a third and nine. Burrow, pressure again. Sacked at the 35. Jeffrey Simmons busting through. The Tennessee defense has come to play. Well, this time they Fire do bring the five. This time they game. do bring five. Offense to five yard penalty. Wow, that's down. a that's a big delay a game. Because now all of a sudden they're gonna have third down over again. I tell you what, with that crowd noise, Ian, I didn't I didn't hear the whistle stopping that play, but that actually works to the favor of the Cincinnati Bengals. Are you saying there was a whistle involved here in regards to Cincinnati? <laughs> Because I seem to remember that from a week ago. Well, this one, this one, they tried stopping the play before it happened. Not an inadvertent whistle while it was happening. So the Bengals will get to do it again and actually benefit from the penalty. Third and 14. The crowd is deafening early. They'll go empty again. Spread it on third and 14. Third from the gun. Gets rid of it. Catch is made at the 20, and then Higgins dives forward. They get back that yardage, and now we'll have a manageable field goal after the eight-yard hookup. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's a huge penalty for the Bengals to their benefit. Instead of having to attempt a 55-yard field goal, now all of a sudden they're going to get the ability to try a 38-39 yard field goal. So that, uh, that delay of game penalty actually worked in their favor. Evan McPherson in his playoff debut last week Field goals from 31 yards, 30, 43, 28. Four field goals for the rookie out of Florida. Trying to get Cincinnati on the board. 38-yard attempt. After the turnover, McPherson leans into it and straight through. Bengals take a 3-0 lead over Tennessee. 12-03 to play. Opening quarter. Unique shots from the game are brought to you by Paramount Plus. Cincinnati takes advantage of the turnover. Could have been a lot worse for Tennessee, all things considered. Well, can, yeah, considering they, they got the ball on that side of the field and, and they they were backed up, uh, just holding them to a field goal is uh, is a victory for the Titans defense. Cincinnati Bengals have never won a road playoff game. 0-7 in franchise history. Return man Hilliard. We'll have it come back out to the 25. Let's take a look at Next Gen Stats, powered by AWS. You can see from a play action standpoint, with and without Derrick Henry on the field, without him, it's three yards less per attempt. And that's the type of influence and presence that Derrick Henry on the field brings. Now Tannehill's got to be able to bounce back after that interception on the one play they've had today. And it came on play action to Derrick Henry. They go with a four receiver set from the 25 yard line. One play of offense and a pick from Tannehill for the Titans. This time they give it to Henry. Yeah, just good to get that first carry under your belt. We did participate in practice this week when we spoke with Derrick Henry. Just said his mentality after the diagnosis and surgery in his head, it was all about just getting back as quickly as possible. They never gave him a specific timetable. They just kept giving him x-rays as time went on. It was getting better and better and better, and then poof, here he is in the playoffs. Well, and, and, and I just like the fact that uh, from an expectation standpoint, he said, listen, I just want to help out the team however I can. I'm, co I'm coming into this game with not lofty expectations. I just want to help out the team. Second down and eight. Henry brought down behind the line of scrimmage. DJ Reader. He read it well. A loss of one for Tennessee. Well, we mentioned it at the top in Evans' report, the fact that they have Henry, they have A.J. Brown, Julio Jones healthy. They also have a healthy offensive line, and that had been an issue throughout the season, mixing and matching. In the absence of Jones and Brown, it meant more time for Westbrook or Kina, who's taken a big step forward in year two under Mike Graber. Third and nine. Blasting game, the fullback is in. Operating from the gut, Tannehill. He's dumped at the 19. Mike Hilton among those pushing 
and a loss of seven on the play. They overload the right side. Watch the right side of the line here. All five come. The backside, Trey Hendrickson drops into coverage. Logan Wilson drops into coverage. You load that many guys on the side. All of a sudden, the protection spread out. They can't handle five guys on one side. You're not going to slide it all over there. Not with H Hendrickson on the back side. So excellent job of play design there by Luana Lumo overloading the right side. And a rough start offensively for Tennessee. Brett Kern punts it. And a good kick that will roll inside the 35, settle down right around the 31. That's a 50-yard boot. Quiet early for the Titans. Cincinnati with the lead. They get the ball back here in the first. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. FedEx, where now meets next. And by Uncharted in theaters February 18th. Cincinnati coming off that win over Las Vegas. 308 yards of offense last week. They allowed 385 to the Raiders. Finished the game on a pick by Pratt to seal it. First down, shotgun. Pass was offline. He was looking for Uzama. He's been a nice safety blanket for Burrow this season. Incomplete. Well, that's all on Joe Burrow. He just got to set and step and throw. That's a, just a quick out by the tight end. You have a flat, quick out combination. It's a drive starter. It's, it's the reason you call the play is just to get some positive yards on first down. He just fell away from the throw. That's why it pulled to the outside. When we asked Zach Taylor about Burrow, he said he's pretty amazing in terms of his confidence and how the team feeds off it. When you believe in your quarterback, you feel like anything is possible in this league. Right now, Tennessee believes in their pass rush. Harold Landry, who had a breakout season, basically untouched to get to Burrow and a loss of seven. Isaiah Prince has problems. He's going to come in between here. Watch how Landry gets beats Prince to the inside. It's almost like Prince believes he has help to the inside. Watch how he steps to the outside thinking he has inside help, but then he doesn't get any help. What, that, that's an easy target for Landry if he's able to get through. Good job by Burrow to protect the football. Tennessee had 43 sacks this season, tied for ninth in the NFL. They set up Cincinnati third and long. Burrow, floater, caught by P. Ryan, and then goes down after the catch for a modest gain of five, and it's Jeffrey Simmons who was in there for Tennessee. Fourth down. Second team All-Pro Jeffrey Simmons sniffed that out. He knows that on third and long, there are a lot of times offenses like running screen plays, and that time he was ready for it. So the veteran Kevin Huber will kick it away. Chester Rogers, deep man, standing at the 25-yard line for Tennessee. High snap handle. Huber angles it. Enough. Rogers called for a fair catch. The question, was there contact? And a flag comes down. It was at the 25. Trey Flowers made his way down the field, and there was a collision. It's all based on the timing here, 48 yards on the punt he did make contact well he did make contact i just don't know why it took that long for the flag to come out he tried to pull back and hold up and then he walked away like wait i didn't touch him yeah but they got it you did kick catch interference kicking team number 33 15 yard penalty first down so Tennessee is going to get yardage after the contact from Flowers. You're watching the Intuit TurboTax Live AFC Divisional on CBS. Trent initially, it's pretty obvious blocking is not going to be on the highlight reel in this opening quarter. Yeah, there have been some struggles on both sides with that. First down from the 40, fake it. Bootleg, Tannehill, pump and throw. Catch made by Julio Jones. Jones working that sideline. The Titans are hoping this is just a sleeping giant. Julio Jones had his worst season statistically as a pro, dealing with hamstring injury, COVID, and now here he is in the playoffs feeling good. And Tennessee feeling good about that first play, hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. 
Good enough for a first oh, touchdown in Cincinnati territory. It's Henry time. Running lane. Henry powers through it to the 41. Good block from Nate Davis. That's an eight-yard pickup for Derrick Henry. Excellent job on the left side here as Derrick Henry is able to pick up a big chunk of yardage. Oh. Saffold able to get a good block at the point of attack. And they're going up-tempo here, Tennessee. Second down and two. Tight formation. Henry again. Gets enough for the first down. Pushes that pile for three. Well, for Derrick Henry, he felt good about how things went in practice. He mentioned how excited he was just to be back with the team and playing football again. When we asked him about expectations for this game, he said, I never set expectations for myself. I wouldn't be out there unless I felt I could do what I normally do. Well, and I, I think that's why there's not going to be a restriction on the number of plays. Obviously, they're going to communicate with him and find out how that foot's feeling on a series-by-series -series basis. Henry again. And this time, he is hit by D.J. Reeder, a wall at the line of scrimmage, and a loss of one for Henry. D.J. Reeder's had an outstanding season, and we've already seen him twice today with tackles behind the line of scrimmage, and what a force he's been in the middle. Especially concerning, you no know, Ogan Joby put on IR after last week's game against the Raiders. Reader's going to have to have a big one today. Surgery on his right foot, Larry Ogan Joby, who had a terrific season. So they've had B.J. Hill step in. They'll have a rotation on that D-line with Josh Tupo, Tyler Sheldon available as well. Zach Kerr just picked up second and eleven. Tannehill in the pocket, throws on the move. Couldn't catch it. Blasting game. He tried to look it into his hands, and then he looked down, it wasn't there. A lot of what the Titans like to do, they like running multiple tight end packages, they like having extra offensive linemen to come in in the running game, and so when you have a pass game set up that way, like on that play, only two receivers are out in the route, and then, then you get the late release to the outside as your outlet pass. So, not many choices for Tannehill if the defense doesn't bite up on that play action pass. Blossom game had only two receptions during the regular season. Dontrell Hilliard is in. He stepped in along with Deontay Foreman when Henry went down with the injury. Tannehill, third and 11. Low throw, offline. It hit the ground. Incomplete. A.J. Brown, the intended receiver. And Bates tried to run it downfield but the officials saw it and now Tennessee in no man's land here they'd be staring at a 57 yard field goal attempt well Logan Wilson brought some pressure to the inside he's the one that hits Tannehill knocks him to the ground not able to finish through with that throw as it falls short to A.J. Brown so Tennessee is going to punt it here on fourth and 11 Strong defensive showing so far from both sides. Cincinnati came in excellent against the run. Number five in the NFL. Tennessee even better. Second in the NFL versus the run. Brett Kern, the veteran. 14 years in the league. And this appeared to be the game plan from the very start. They were in no rush. Let the clock wind down. Well, the hard part there, Ryan, is fourth Delay and game. 11. Offense. The penalties declined. Remains fourth down. So I think they thought if they could just get a cheap one and get five yards and then maybe try a field goal attempt or, or even go for it on fourth down, there was really no, uh, no problem in taking that penalty. Nope. Cincinnati declines it. I think Cincinnati is preparing for a potential fake. They're not going to do that. Kern boots it high. Taylor... Fresh off the practice squad, fair catch. Secure at the 12, it's a 27 yard kick. Cincinnati, deep in its own territory when we come back to Nashville. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Bet MGM, the king of sportsbooks. The league's 88 best players are set to face off on the Pro Bowl field in Las Vegas. Catch the 2022 Pro Bowl presented by Verizon Sunday, February 6th, 3 p.m. Eastern. Buy your tickets today at ProBowl.com or watch the excitement. ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. 
First down run, tried to reverse it, and Nixon is spun down. Harold Landry, first man there. Forward progress will get him half a yard. Oh, and I, and both these teams are, are dialed in to stopping the run as, as both teams have struggled, really, other than that one eight-yard run by Derrick Henry in the last series, getting anything going in the run game. Well, we mentioned Tennessee, lack of turnovers. Cincinnati, no turnovers last five games, including last week against Las Vegas. Second down and nine. Burrow, toss it underneath. Good hands. Chase, catch and run. He's got ridiculous speed. Jamar Chase brought down from behind inside the 30. Zach Cunningham making it downfield, and the LSU connection once again reveals itself. Well, this is, the, this is the problem you fall into. If you're a defense, you decide to go man-to-man. -man. Yes, you're going to go off coverage because you're worried about Jamar Chase running right by you, but Fulton comes up to make the tackle, and because the throw was a little errant to the inside, Chase has to react to the ball, go get it, and then it's just a foot race. Chase will be matched up at times against his high school and college teammate Christian Fulton. Both from the New Orleans area. That's a 57-yard catch and run. Chase again. They get him involved. And yeah, not much there. He took a pop after a couple of yards. We asked Jamar Chase about the different roles he served. He said at the beginning of the season, they just lined me up at X. And then as the season went on, they would use him in some different spots. So uh, he's been one of those guys that you're not quite sure where he's going to be on the field. Well, now, and if you remember, the beginning of the season was a lot of big plays to him, right? A lot of big throws yeah. down the field because he was isolated in that X spot. Then there was a lull there in the middle of the season. And then as they started moving him around and utilizing him in different ways, the big plays came back to him. The pro bowler nicknamed Uno. Burrow is sacked. Danico Autry gets home for Tennessee. Cunningham supplied the initial heat. And that's the third sack of the quarter for the Titans. Well, they've been able to put constant pressure. Danico Autry and Jonah Williams just beats him and bull rushes him first. Back into the backfield. Watch on the edge. 96 puts it back in there. And then Autry is able to escape to the inside. So when Burrow steps up, it's an easy sack. Shane Bowen, defensive coordinator in his first year with Tennessee, was the outside linebacker coach. They've been really aggressive, third and 14. Higgins, the hands. And then hit as he crossed the 30-yard line, seven yards on the pass and catch. But Cincinnati once again in field goal range, and they're going to send out Nick Fearson to try to add to this lead. Well, Ian, it's safe to say the go-to call on third and long when you're trying to get better field goal range is the slant to Higgins. That's what they've done both times, just to try and pick up some yardage for McPherson as this will be a 45-yard attempt. And McPherson has been kick Fearson over the last couple of weeks, and they've relied on him. 45-yarder. Huber will hold it. Harris the snapper. Cincinnati trying to tap on three more. McPherson curls it through and it's a six nothing lead for the bengals 2 11 to play in the opening quarter coming back to nashville back here at nissan stadium opened in 1999 the 23rd year as the home of the titans fan base has been energized here but their team is down six to nothing cincinnati with a pair of field goals and McPherson kicking it off to Hilliard. Booming kick. Touchback. This past summer, the Tennessee Titans and Williamson County Sports Conference partnered to form the first ever interscholastic girls flag football league in the state of Tennessee. All nine of Williamson County's public schools will field teams begin their inaugural season in March. Championship games set to be played right here at Nissan Stadium in May. Flag players from all nine high schools are here today cheering on the Titans. Great initiative in the community here in Nashville. Deontay Foreman is in. Did Yeoman's work in the absence of Henry. He had three 100-yard games in the last six weeks. 
Rugged running style. Foreman, former Houston Texan, is hard nosed. He gets a pop from Marcus Bailey. We check in with Evan. Uh, and you guys touched on it. The Bengals thin at that defensive tackle position. Josh Tupo coming off that knee injury. He's currently on the sideline, opposite end, on the bench, looking like he's not heading into this game. A touch base with the Bengals. They said there's no injury designation right now, but he's not part of the rotation. So they're down to four. They activated five, which is not normal for him. It could be thin moving forward. Yeah, no doubt. Ogan Joby has been such a big part. Had seven sacks this season. Tannehill on time to Julio Jones. First down to the 40-yard line. 13 yards through the air. Jermaine Pratt with a tackle. Well, when the trade was made to bring Julio Jones in, he thought that was going to be the final piece to get ten Tennessee into the Super Bowl. And, and we, we've touched on the fact that injuries to Derrick Henry to Julio Jones, to A.J. Brown, to the offensive line, getting everybody back and healthy. They now have the number one seed, and getting him involved will be a big impact if they can get that going. Form into the backfield. New set of downs to work with for Tennessee. Fake it. Tannehill has time. A deep shot. Too far for A.J. Brown. Brown dealt with injuries this season as well. In fact, the games that he has played, Tennessee has gone 11-2 this season we're down to 50 seconds to go in the opening quarter well and the difference also with him in the lineup is when he's in the lineup they're throwing for 54 more yards per game with him in the lineup than when he's not in the lineup so i know a lot has been made about derrick henry because obviously those are staggering numbers that he brings to the table in the running game but aj brown's health is just as important to this offense brown heads to the sideline second down and 10 for tennessee Tannehill, quick hitter to the outside. Rodgers got bunched up in that area, and Wilson buries him. Three-yard pickup out in the flat, and it sets up third down for Tennessee. Logan Wilson, the second-year linebacker out of Wyoming, is just relentless with his pursuit, and, and he leads the team in tackles. He missed several games in the middle of the season with a shoulder injury, leads the team in interceptions with four. But he is a guy that will constantly be on the move. You'll see him all over the field today making play. Didn't start playing linebacker until after his redshirt freshman season at Wyoming. Third down and seven. Final seconds of this first quarter. Tannehill. Protection. It was falling apart. He gets out of there. Tannehill buys time. Looking to run. And gets hit. At the 45-yard line, he is short of a first down. Trey Hendrickson with a hit. Tannehill gains five, and that takes us to the end of the first. Cincinnati and Tennessee. The AFC Divisional on CBS. Eighty-four yards of offense in that opening quarter for Cincinnati, just 37 for Tennessee. Defense has been the storyline so far, Trent. Well, it has been, and, and the pressure that both these quarterbacks have been under. Really, it's the it's the turnover that set up the first field goal, and the hits that went for 57 yards that set up the second field goal for the Bengals. No rush. Brett Kern, clean kick. Taylor gets under it, and he hauls it in. At the 12, a 41-yard punt. The divisional playoffs continue tonight on Fox, then tomorrow on NBC and CBS, and of course, next Sunday, don't miss the AFC Championship game on CBS, followed by the NFC Championship game on Fox. All games presented by Intuit TurboTax Live. Cincinnati Bengals have not been to the AFC Championship game since 1988. They went to the Super Bowl that year. They lost eight straight playoff games before last week's win over the Raiders. First down, trying to establish something on the ground. Mixon carries a defender with him across the 15-yard line for four. Bud Dupree there defensively for Tennessee. Tyler Boyd, the wide receiver, had the responsibility of sealing the backside in Bud Dupree, and, and I think Bud Dupree took that as a personal challenge as he wasn't going to allow that to happen as he collapsed down the line of scrimmage to make that tackle. These two teams did play last year, November 1st, 2020, Cincinnati with a 31-20 victory. Burrow had a couple of touchdown passes, 249 yards. Burrow, pump and throw, incomplete in the direction of Chase. 
And Jack Rabbit Jenkins with the coverage. Well, Jenkins has to have this, is you're going to see the collision that happens on the route. So that leaves Jenkins all by himself to make the easy interception. He gets caught up, I think, visually because of the collision with Jamar Chase and what's going on. So he doesn't see the ball as clearly setting up this third down for the Bengals. Third down and six. Tennessee crowds the line. Just underway here in the second. Chris Evans, the rookie out of Michigan, is in the backfield. Play clock went to zero. They didn't get the playoff. Burrow goes down. Joe Burrow. They're going to say a late timeout by Cincinnati. Prior to the snap, Cincinnati takes its first timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. We know he went through the injury trouble last season, torn ACL, MCL. Tremendous comeback in year two. We spoke with him at different times during the season, and he felt, yeah, I'm getting back to where I trusted again. There were a couple of runs midway point of the season where you could tell he was back to his old self. Yeah, considering all that he went through, it, it was less than eight months yeah. from the time of the surgery in early December till he returned in July to training camp and took the very first snap of training camp. Listen, I went through an ACL, MCL surgery and know what that recovery is like. For him to get back in that short of time and playing at the level that he is playing at is nothing less than phenomenal. He got sacked 47 times this season, second most in the NFL. The only other quarterback sacked more was Ryan Tannehill. Sacked 51 times. Third and six. Burrow. Perfect pass to Higgins. A first down. You know, it's one thing to have confidence. It's another thing to play at the high level week in and week out. Burrow's got both. Well, he, he's got the confidence, but we, we just touched on the injury factor. And so not only does he have the confidence, he knows he can make those throws. He understands he can get the team into the right play. But you've got to get used to guys falling around your legs again. Yeah. You've got to get used to taking hits and having confidence in that knee again. We've seen multiple times this season where he's been able to spin out of tackles and make throws in congested environments. He has an unflappable mentality. Nixon, nothing there. Look how many blue jerseys kept rolling towards Mixon, including Danico Autry and David Long. It's a loss of three. Well, and, and just to finish up on the Joe Burrow, that, that was that, what Zach Taylor told us too, Ian. He, he said, listen, the guys respond to him. He's a leader. They know when he's in the huddle on the field that he has the opportunity to get it done every time. Great response by the Titans defense there to get into the backfield. Cause a loss, setting up a third long. Or second long. That'll be second down and 13. Delay give, and Mixon hammered Zach Cunningham along with Naquan Jones. No gain on the play for Cincinnati. It's third and long. Well, Adenogy's just going to get beat. He, it, it's, he really doesn't even put in a... I don't even know if he touches him uh, as he gets into the backfield, and, and that's just not going to get it done for the Bengals in there. It's a Cincinnati team that had the third most empty sets this season behind the Rams and the Ravens. Some moving pieces here. They are going to use Pirine off to the side of Burrow. Shotgun. Protection is there. Zips a pass. Handled by Uzama. Tackled at the 40-yard line. Well short of a first down. So they pick up seven, and Cincinnati will punt it. Well, I just like the inside-outside leverage there by the Titans, not allowing any kind of gap to pick up the first down. Good response by the defense, understanding it was third and long. Let him hit the check down and then come up, rally, make the tackle, and force the punt. 13-year veteran Kevin Huber will punt it away to Chester Rogers, the former Colt, waiting at the 15-yard line. No rush. Wobbler. Rodgers is going to return it from the 21. Stop and go move, trying to circle to the outside. Oh, yeah! Couldn't quite turn the corner on Marcus Bailey, and a flag is thrown at the 37-yard line. 
So we'll hear from Cleet Blakeman. Cincinnati, one of the least penalized teams in the NFL this year. Second fewest penalties in the league. During the return, holding. Return team, number 81. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down, Tennessee. It's Racy McMath called on the penalty. Titans have the football. Still looking for their first points of the day. Want to take a moment to acknowledge our brilliant director, Bob Fishman. He's working his final NFL game at CBS. He's been at CBS for over 50 years. Yes, applause. He will retire after the college basketball season. Started at CBS Sports in 75. Started as a production assistant at CBS News in 72. You name it, he's done it. Countless events, a legend in our business. For everybody at CBS Sports, we love you, Fish. Take camera one. Tannehill, deep ball is caught by A.J. Brown. Big game downfield into Cincinnati territory. Double tight ends to the left, slot receiver to the right. That's A.J. Brown. He sells like he's going to cross the field. He gets AJ, he gets uh, Jesse Bates to hesitate in the middle of the field, and then Brown takes the high angle up there. Nicely thrown ball by Tannehill. Hmm. Hendrickson with the hit, just as Tannehill released it. By far the best play of the day for Tennessee. They back it up with a Derrick Henry run as he lunges just across the 40-yard line. Tyler Shelvin there defensively, and this was Tannehill after that hit, making his way downfield to join his teammates. And I and you and I have talked about the number of hits that both these quarterbacks have taken, but Ryan Tannehill there able to, to get back up to line of scrimmage, run the next play, and a little bit of a lead. Second down and seven. Henry, that hole closed up quickly. Jesse Bates getting down low to deal with the big body of Derrick Henry. As we know, if you're a defensive player in the secondary or if you're a linebacker, you're trying to avoid the stiff arm from Derrick Henry because you're going to end up on a highlight it's reel. Gonna it's going to be a highlight reel somewhere. And I remember talking to Derrick Henry about that a couple of seasons ago and, and all his stiff arms and, and the highlights of those stiff arms. He said, he kind of shrugged it off and was like, you know what, I've been doing that since I was a kid, so yeah. it's really not that big a deal to me. It's just what I do. There's a lot of people out there watching the game like, hey, I got stiff arm <laughs> by Derrick Henry. Put me on the That's list. True. Third down and three. Motion man Hilliard. Ten Hill. Swing this up by Hilliard. Spin is good enough for a first down. Awuzie ranged over, and Hilliard got just enough to move the chains. Uh, and how about the awareness of Hilliard to know that he's going to take the hit? It's one of those things you're looking at the ball, but you can feel the defender coming. He senses that he's about to get hit from Awuzie, and he spins, and as you said, able to pick up the first down. Lou Anarumo, formerly with the Giants in Miami. He's been here with Zach Taylor the last three years. We've seen consistent improvement on that side of the ball for the Bengals. First down. Inside the 35. Motion man Swain. Running play. Henry trying to soften up this Cincinnati D. Henry lowers the shoulder. Six-yard gain for Derrick Henry. It was Shelvin who got faked out initially for Cincinnati. So you get Saffold pulling across. You get the tight end pulling across. It's the play's supposed to go to the front side. It's, it's a counter run but there's nowhere to go to the front side, and he's able to bounce it back and make a game. Hey, Mom. Crazy part, Derrick Henry was leading the NFL in rushing when he went down with the injury. He still finished ninth in the lead. Tannehill sells the fake. On the move, Tannehill hits his man. First down catch, Julio Jones. He took a hit from Von Bell and holds on to the ball for 13. Well, this is where the new safety rules come into play because before that would have been a shot to the player. Instead, it's a shot by Bell to try and knock the ball loose as he goes in with the shoulder just to try and dislodge the ball as opposed to the big blow-up blow hit. Tennessee on the move. Catch by Brown. The fake. 
stutter, out of bounds. You've got physical wide receivers. A.J. Brown plays much bigger than his 6'2", 226-pound frame. And the fake on Mike Hilton worked eight yards. Well, I, his stature reminds me a lot of Debo Samuel with San yep. Francisco, right? A lower center of gravity, big, powerful legs. They don't shy away from contact. And if you're playing them in press, you better be ready for a battle. Second down and two. Motion man, Brown. Henry gets the call. And Henry has got a first down. Tried to smack the ball out at the last moment, Pratt, but he was already down on the ground. Three yards, grinding it out for Tennessee. It's first and goal. Well, and really what got them, them kick-started, this offense had been struggling, but what got them kick-started was the big throw to A.J. Brown on the corner route on the play-action pass, and now they've been able to sustain and get the run game going a little bit, get Derrick Henry going a little bit. And now they've got a first and goal, and this is, this is the best team in the NFL at first and goal. And Tannehill will release. It's going to be Henry on a direct snap. We know he can throw it if he wants, or he can do this. Henry takes it in. Touchdown, Tennessee. They brought in the extra offensive lineman. They sent Tannehill to the outside, and then it's just pick your poison. Watch the block by Westbrook Aquino on the outside, number 15. Watch as Henry comes to the inside. He seals Bates to the outside and allows Henry to get inside for the touchdown. Nine plays, 84 yards. That big play was Tannehill to Brown for 41. Welcome back to the King here in Nashville. Whistle stops play before the extra point. Two flags down in the end zone. Cincinnati has 12. And Cleet Blakeman has indicated. So now you got to decide if you're going to go for two. If you want to take the penalty and move down closer and go for a two-point conversion. So Cleet is heading over towards the Tennessee sideline. Have a chat with Mike Vrabel. Mike played his college ball at Ohio State. Cleet played quarterback at Nebraska. They're not talking about that. <laughs> it's not a topic. 12 men in formation on the defense. And Tennessee is elected to enforce that penalty from the two yard line to the one and go for, go for a two point try. Well, there you go, Trent. Mike Vrabel, who very well could be the coach of the year in the NFL this season, makes the decision here in the second quarter that well, we've got, put his team in a position to go for two. We've got two of the top candidates in the NFL for no coach of the year with Zach Taylor and Mike Vrabel. But here, uh, I've never heard Mike Vrabel talk a lot about it's analytics, but this is where the analytics part of it comes into it. It's like if you're at the one-yard line, you've got the best goal-to-goal -goal offense, first-and-goal offense in the NFL. You've got Derrick Henry back. He decides to not go for the, the kick and go for the two-point conversion. Tennessee trying to take the lead. Henry. Oh, it's really close. He didn't get there. Cincinnati stops him. Clay Johnston at the goal line for the Bengals. Clay Johnston's at the top of your screen, coming off the edge. He's able to get the feet of Derrick Henry. You see the forearm come down, and the ball does not touch and cross the plane. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Caesar Sportsbook. Your app is ready, Emperor. Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. And by Pepsi. Tune in on February 13th to catch the Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show. Well, Trent, the second time today where a penalty has actually benefited the Bengals. They had to delay a game that nullified a sack, and they got to get some extra yards on a third down to kick a field goal here. Penalties on an extra point. Tennessee lines it up at the one. They come up short on the two-point try. And that's why you never know. It's, uh crazy game and, and as you get the analytics and numbers involved in it it changes things up
here's Derrick Henry in the Wildcat formation. When we've seen him in the playoffs, here he is taking a direct snap. Nope, he's going to do a jump pass to Corey Davis for the touchdown. And then against Kansas City, he doesn't throw it. More traditionally, he runs it in. And here it is just a few minutes ago. Westbrook Aquino on the outside getting the block on Bates. King Henry touchdown. So that penalty is so enticing for teams. Tennessee elects not to kick it. It would be a 7-6 lead instead. We're tied at six. Burrow steps up, avoids the pressure, and the pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Nate Juan Jones gets in there for Tennessee. Playing defense against Cincinnati, so much emphasis is placed on not giving up the big play. Make sure you get, do not let them behind you as they see the ball tip there. Burrow trying to go down the middle. Joe Burrow is 7 of 11, 124 yards. Had a 57-yard catch and run to chase. Bengals go empty, shotgun Burrow gets rid of it quickly and hits the intended receiver, Tyler Boyd. The ball popped free. It was ruled down as he crossed the 30-yard line. So it'll be third down for Cincinnati. Well, and Cincinnati went to an empty backfield. You said Mixon moving to the outside, so nobody's back there. And it looked like the Tennessee Titans were just going to rush four, drop seven, but they decided to, to blitz Molden off the slot. Not able to get there in time as they got the completion set up a third and short. Now, you think back, last two seasons, 2019, this team was 2-14. 2020, they were 4-11-1, and, and then made a big jump behind the arm and smarts of Joe Burrow in 2021 a timeout called 5 16 to play in the first half we're back in 30 seconds after this from state farm cincinnati takes its second third down and four for the cincinnati Bengals. we are tied at six five 16 to play first half P. Ryan in there as an extra blocker. Burrow lays it out there for Uzama. It's a first down for the Bengals. Tackle made by Amani Hooker, and it's a seven-yard hookup. We had Higgins out in the flat. That draws the attention of the defense, so Uzama goes up and gets first down depth. It's just a matter of pitch and catch, getting the first down, able to secure the football. When we talked to Zach Taylor about Joe Burrow. He said... He's not a big note taker. He's a visual learner. He's always prepared. He memorizes what he needs. Pretty remarkable is the way he put it. He understands the why and what of what we're running. Mixon is buried. Zach Cunningham with a number of other defenders there. And I'm going to be honest with you, Ian. I was a little shocked by that. I haven't heard too many quarterbacks that don't take a lot of notes. And the fact that he's able to visualize it and understand, and Zach said, you know, he absorbs it. He yeah. knows He knows what the play is, and, and he has the freedom at the line of scrimmage on any play to check in and out of it because he has that much confidence in what Joe, Joe Burrow knows and, and how he handles himself. So pretty special player they have in Joe Burrow. And Zach said, I can't relate to it. He was a quarterback, Zach. He said there's a reason why he was the number one pick, <laughs> and I played one year in the CFL. <laughs> play clock is down to two. Down to one. They get the snap off on second and nine. Burrow tossed to the outside. Higgins with the hands and a first down. Yeah, the other part of the conversation, he said, Zach Taylor, they've called a lot of big shots down the field the last few weeks that Burrow has actually checked them out of when he didn't like what he saw defensively, and they trust him to do anything he needs to do in this offense. Well, and that's just the growth and the confidence that they have in Joe Burrow. Knowing, you know, sometimes as a young quarterback, you get a big play call, you're like, I'm going to throw it. I, I finally got a big play call, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance at it. But uh, the discipline that he's shown, we, we've talked about the number of turnovers and how he's cut back on turnovers, especially the last five starts, has been pretty special. Burrow. Catch and run. Joe Mixon, physical, has not had a big role so far here in the first half. Picks up four yards and tackled by the all-pro Kevin Byard. Cincinnati moving quickly here. We are under three minutes to go. Second down and six. 
Burrow making sure everybody's on the same page. Well, there's one of those checks, I mean, he's at the line of scrimmage. He's communicating to everybody. He gets back in shotgun, and he changed that play. He's going to throw it. Over the middle. Hits T. Higgins for a big game. Fumbles the football and goes right to Jamar Chase. And the Bengals have it at the 21-yard line. Well, what, what Joe Burrow sees here is that the Titans are going to go to cover two. So with cover two, you clear the tight end down the middle of the field, and then you have Higgins on the outside running that deep dig. So you get everybody out of the middle of the field by taking a, a, a tight end deep, and then you've got that second layer or that second window that Burrow's able to get the com completion to. This is Bengals are fortunate to get that ball warning. after it was fumbled. Two-minute warning in Nashville. Deadlocked at six apiece. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new film from director Michael Bay, Ambulance, in theaters April 8th, and by Chipotle, for real. Send it down to Evan Washburn. We guys have talked about the command of Joe Burrow multiple times during this drive. I've seen the play call come in late, whether it's sideline comms or just how loud it is. He's taking complete control of this line at times by himself. And five straight completions for Burrow. He's got the Bengals set up first and 10 at the Tennessee 21. Stepping up. And Burrow gets tagged at the 20 yard line. It's a gain of one. The hit by David Long Jr. A lot of gamesmanship going on at the line of scrimmage right now. Burrow was in an empty set. Tennessee there was nobody in the middle of the field. There was nobody in the middle of the field. They had a cover zero look, man to man on the outside, everybody else at the line of scrimmage. Burrow moves Mixon into the backfield, changes the plays up. Then all of a sudden, Tennessee, before the ball snapped, they dropped safety yep. to get back. Just that gamesmanship going on at the line of scrimmage right now. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower, latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Verizon. Halftime report. It's going to go down as a sack. It's listed as no gain on the play, so credit to Long. Now a second and ten. Take the handoff. Nope. They give it up. Uzama. Picks up just one. Tennessee using timeouts here, trying to conserve as much clock as possible. 147 to go. And we'll come back in 30 seconds after this from Amazon Prime. AFC North champion Cincinnati Bengals against the AFC South champion Tennessee Titans. Third and nine, a jump and a flag down. Full start, offense number 75. Five yard penalty, still third down. It'll be Prince on the right side of the line at right tackle. Watch him move. See right there, he flinches in the backfield. I don't know why he was moving, because P. Ryan was coming. He was shifting into the backfield. You know, Zach Taylor said the Tennessee defense feeds off those false starts. The crowd then gets energized. It's an intimidating front. Third and 14. Burr sent his trouble. And he gets mauled. Jeffrey Simmons has well, that, been a beast. You know, and that's a problem because not only now, now it looks like Vrabel uses that last timeout to get the clock stopped, but it potentially takes them out of field goal range. The only rush for Simmons has had his way all day. It's a 12-yard loss, Trent. That's a huge loss in the fifth sack of the first half for the Titans' defense. Jeffrey Simmons in his third year out of Mississippi State has really come into his own. Torn ACL in 2019. He came back from that very quickly and proved that he was a legitimate player at this level. So it will be Evan McPherson attempting a 54-yarder. They've been calling him Money Mac. And he likes the nickname. But you got to make field goals for the nickname to stick. <laughs> you got to make it with that. And he has been. Cincinnati looking to regain the lead. 
54-yard attempt. McPherson drives it. And it is dead solid. Perfect for the Bengals. He is money man. You're watching the Intuit TurboTax Live AFC Divisional on CBS. Cincinnati in front, 9-6 to six over the Tennessee Titans. That turnover battle, which is always such a key statistic. One turnover, it happened on the first play from scrimmage from the Tennessee Titans. Well, in this defense, they, they've had their backs against the wall several times, and they've uh, they've been able to hold the Bengals out of the end zone so far. Five sacks for the defense, the most in the first half by any team in the playoffs since 2000. The Music City Miracle. Return man is Hilliard. And the Tulane product is chopped down at the 25. Friday on CBS. Our coverage of the PGA Tour season begins on a special day and time with defending champion Patrick Reed, part of a fantastic field filled with big names competing at the Farmers Insurance Open. Live coverage begins Friday starting at 5 Eastern and back again next Saturday, 4.30. The PGA Tour is on CBS. Iron with no timeouts left for the Titans because they used it up on defense to make sure they had some in their pocket to... Uh, to get this drive going, a minute 28 or a minute 30, they can utilize the whole field here. Tannehill, his receiver fell down. So A.J. Brown could not make a play on the ball. Incomplete, second down and 10. Trent, this season, Tennessee used 91 players, an NFL record. A lot of it has to do with injuries and COVID. Of course, the Jets used 87 this season. That is second all-time. But it just shows you, for a number one seed to have so much uncertainty throughout the year, how they persevere. It really is impressive what this coaching staff, and we mentioned the fact that Vrabel is one of those guys that should be considered, and is a front runner by many, to be the, the NFL coach of the year because of how many players they've had to rotate. Tannehill, it bounces off his intended target on that toss to Ferkser, incomplete. Well, just think of the, 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 the injuries to some of their big stars, right? They, Derrick Henry missed most of the year, and, and Julio Jones has missed a big chunk of the year. A.J. Brown missed four games. The offensive line, they've been rotating like crazy all throughout the entire season. Uh, we mentioned at the top of this game that it's been since week six that the starting offensive line and the, and the three big weapons that the Titans have have all been healthy and together. Ryan Tannehill said we're a resilient group. We fought through a lot. We've had guys step forward. Confidence has never wavered. Right now, they're in a three-point hole at home. Tannehill on third and ten. Out of the pocket. He's a runner. And it comes up short. B.J. Hill makes sure he didn't get to the line. It's a nine-yard gain, and now a timeout called by Cincinnati. Cincinnati takes his third and final timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. Please put one minute, ten seconds on the game clock. So they'll tack on three seconds. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report, J.B. and the gang. Latest scores and highlights. This is really the only score, and they will show highlights from this game because this is the first of <laughs> four games. So I don't want to take it back, but I don't want to mislead the public. You don't want to mislead. No, but, uh, it, it's all coming up. There's other games that they don't know about. You, you want to <laughs> tune in for the Verizon Halftime Report. It's going to be good, trust me. 156 yards of offense for Cincinnati, 130 for the Tennessee Titans, and another punt here for Kern. Well, Ian, with the two incomplete passes on first and second down, and then the tackle short of the sticks, Zach Taylor doing a good job getting that quick timeout to preserve some time for his offense. Taylor backpedals, fair catch, called for, and brought in short of the 20. It's a 47-yard kick. Cincinnati's got some time to work with here. Up 9-6. Break down the divisional round with the pros who know on Inside the NFL streaming Tuesday exclusively on Paramount Plus. 102 on the clock. First down of the 18. Burrow, dump off. Catch by Mixon. Gets to the sideline. Out of bounds. Met by Christian Fulton on the play. The second-year corner from LSU. Four-yard gain. 
for most of this this half, I and they, they've been doubling uh, Jamar Chase. You, whether it be with a, a press corner and safety help over the top or a cover two, they just don't want to give up that big play. Now, Chase has had a big play, but that was just on a hit yep. that he converted from a four-yard catch into a 57-yard game. Dime package here for Tennessee. Under a minute to go. Second down and six. Burrow steps. Perfectly placed along the sideline, and it's ruled incomplete. T. Higgins, he had to complete the catch as Jenkins drilled him. Well, as you, as you said, Ian, perfectly thrown football right in between three defenders. Not able to finish the catch or make a football move prior to that ball coming loose. So now it's third and six. We're down to 49 seconds to play. Both teams are out of timeouts. Final stages of this first half. On third down, Burrow. Short set, floater. Hold in, Tyler Boyd. First down, Cincinnati with Buster Screen back there. Good for 10 yards. Well, if this was a little bit lower throw, they may have been able to catch it and get out of bounds. But what a gutsy call by Shane Bowen, the defensive coordinator, going 10 guys at the line of scrimmage and press man. Burrow darts it over the middle. Catch made by Mixon. Spin move for the first down. But the clock continues to roll. We're down to 20 seconds left. That's 11 yards on the pass play. 15 seconds. The spike from Burrow with 13 seconds to play. Well, now with 13 seconds, you would think that you've got to get something either towards the boundary. If you want to try to get in the field goal range, and we know, we've talked about McPherson, how powerful his leg is. Get something out of bounds. You need about 16 yards to get into McPherson range. Well, he does have a 58-yarder, so you're right. 50, 58 yards, yes. 16 yards, get him out to 40. Hard part's going to be is if you don't stop the clock, getting everybody up in time to clock it is... Dallas learned that's not an easy thing to do. Key run in there. Burrow looking. Clock winding down. Burrow. Six seconds. Five seconds. And he tosses it away. With four seconds on the clock. And that took a lot of time. Well, it took a lot of time because the Titans decided to rush only two and drop nine into coverage. So they were pretty set on not allowing anything near the boundary the only thing they were going to allow open was the middle of the field they weren't allowing anything deep either they had a lot of bodies deep challenging burrow to try and squeeze something in there and trent aj brown is on the field for defense they're going to go with seven defensive backs toss it underneath Uzama as time winds down. That'll be a nice window dressing on the stat sheet, but that's it. And that's how this first half ends. 29 yards on the catch and run. A tight one in Nashville with the Bengals on top. 9-6 to six over the Titans. Halftime is next. After these first half highlights from Verizon. And a word from your local station. Tune in on February 13th for the biggest moment of the year, the Pepsi Super Bowl 56 halftime show featuring Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. Get you set for second half action. Cincinnati in front, 9-6 in the AFC Divisional. Back here in the broadcast booth, Ian Eagle, Trent Green, Evan Washburn down on the field. Instinctually, you would think this game favors Tennessee. This is a physical team, grinded out style. Cincinnati's hanging in there, playing this style against the Titans. Well, they're more than holding their own. Not only do they have the lead, but their defense is playing outstanding. They, they've held Derrick Henry to just 30 yards of offense. Ryan Tannehill is right around 50% completion, and he had that turnover that set up the first field goal for the Bengals. So give credit to that Cincinnati defense. It is a young Cincinnati team, but they don't play like that. Last week, for most of them, first taste of playoff action. They handled themselves well in the victory over Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Tennessee is the number one seed. Third straight playoff appearance.
for this team. Return man is Chris Evans, looping to the outside. Evans hit just short of the 35 by Farley. Downstairs to Evan. Oh, I talked to Zach Taylor, and he said this is the type of game we expected. I asked him about the protection for Joe Burrow, five sacks in that first half, and he said the Titans are getting off the ball really well, and some of that, guys, has to do with the fact they're not getting the play off until late in the play clock, and that allows the Titans to get a jump. Feels like the noise is having an impact. As for Mike Vrabel, they have to sustain drives. One for five on third down. He said Derrick Henry is just fine. We just have to get him going. Cincinnati opens his third quarter with the football. Toss it to Joe Mixon underneath. And Mixon tackled at the 42 by Cunningham. In that first half, 207 yards through the air for Cincinnati. Tennessee limited to 85. The turnover by the Titans. That led to three points for Cincinnati. And Evan just mentioned it. Five sacks for the Tennessee defense. Well, and if I'm the if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, you got to try and get Joe Mixon in the running game going. You saw seven yards total in the first half. Mixon just five yards on six attempts. Second down and three. Mixon runs into his own man and comes up just short of the first down. Zach Cunningham will get credit for another tackle for Tennessee. Well, it comes up to third and short, and, and Cunningham, the fill that they've been able to do, Mike Vrabel talked about the fact they're just one of five on third down. The Titans just don't have many plays, 27 plays. The Bengals, on the other hand, are four of nine on third down, and this one here is going to be less than a yard to pick up the first down. They're going to go with an extra offensive lineman. Jackson Carmen, the rookie out of Clemson. They need less than a yard. Fake it. Toss, outside catch, Higgins down the sideline, walks the tightrope, and he's got a first down for Cincinnati. They lost Higgins out on the perimeter. Well, just think of some of the, the unconventional types of look that the Bengals do. When everybody gets close and you think it's going to be a quarterback sneak or a dive to the middle, as we see Higgins working up that sideline more than enough to get the first down but go back to last week when they needed that first down and the toss that they made everybody thought when Burrow came up underneath center there was going to be a quarterback sneak instead they hit Lamar Jamar Chase on the on a movement and got him on a sweep pick up the first down this time they thought everything inside Higgins outflanks and gets the first down Cincinnati nine and one this season when they led at halftime they've got a nine six lead here Mixon leans in across the 40 yard line so while it's been rather quiet, Mixon is someone that can wear you down as the game goes on. And that's been the formula Zach Taylor has visualized this season. Have a lead in the fourth quarter and then go with your bell cow. Well, and I think that's what both of these teams want to do and their run game. They don't want to get away from it. You know that you've got dynamic quarterback in Joe Burrow, but don't get away from that run because in the fourth quarter you can get the yards. The same thing goes for the Tennessee Titans. If you think about Derrick Henry and the yards he gets in the fourth quarter, that's why you can't go away, away from the run. Second down and four. They're going to run it again. Mix it. Head of steam for a first down. Spins his way to the 28-yard line. And a strong opening drive to start this second half. This is going to be just a run to the outside. Watch as they seal to the outside. And then the cut by Burrow to get inside. Long takes a, a bad angle. And he gets sealed to the inside. And, th and that allows the inside lane for Mixon. Joe Mixon, he's elusive. He's got great burst, a pro bowler this year. He's been held at 23 yards on the ground. He does have five catches. Burrow steps up and is toppled down at the 35. Sack number six for Tennessee. And Simmons has been a one-man show in the pocket. Simmons has been call, causing problems all day for the Bengals. It, not only in the run game, but in the pass game. And this time, once again, going up against the Denigy and Adenogy just his cleats get out from underneath him and Simmons another sack for the Titans. P. Ryan will get a rep here for Cincinnati. Shotgun for Burke. Tosses over the middle. Uzama breaks a tackle inside the 25. C.J. Uzama had his best season statistically Got an injured Titan on the play.
That could be long. We've avoided this throughout the late afternoon, early evening. Now we're going to step aside, come back to Nashville with the Bengals in front by three. Third-year linebacker David Long was the injured Titan. He did jog off the field. He's now in the pop-up tent. Third and five for Cincinnati. Piron shifts to the backfield. Line of scrimmage is the Tennessee 23. Burrow steps up. Burrow will run. First down on a lunge by Burrow. And that'll move the chains for the Bengals. That's the mobility that Joe Burrow shows and just the confidence he has in that knee. Able to make a little stutter move there and extend and get the first down. Eighth play of the drive. Burrow is 20 of 27 for 266 yards. Just under 10 minutes to play in the third. 9-6 advantage for Cincinnati. Handoff. Mixon talks to the outside, and Mixon is gone. Touchdown, Bengals. What an opening statement in this third quarter. Well, the Titans have done such a good job. Oh, watch the handoff. It's to the right. He's going to wind it all the way back. And there's nobody once he gets to the backside after Fulton loses his footing. Titans did such a good job throughout the first half of this game, keeping the Bengals out of the end zone and holding them to field goals. But the Bengals come out right away in the third quarter, move it down the field, and mix in with the touchdown. And blocks from Williams and Spain on that left side. McPherson on for the extra point. Straight through. The Bengals extend their lead. It's 16 to 6. Cincinnati. More third quarter action coming up here in Nashville. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Mercari, your marketplace. And by Geico. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. The commissioner, Roger Goodell, on hand. It's a good company there. Hall of Famers, Curtis Martin and Anthony Munoz. Roger Goodell was in Dallas last week for that thriller, the Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. Now we got a good one going here in the third quarter. Cincinnati now leads at 16 to 6. Out to the 25-yard line for Tennessee. Stream the entire first season of Mayor of Kingstown on Paramount Plus. The critically acclaimed drama from Yellowstone co-creator Taylor Sheridan starring Jeremy Renner. All episodes of Mayor of Kingstown are now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Tennessee offense out there, first and 10 at the 25, limited to 129 yards in that first half. Blasting game in front of Henry. Fake the jet sweep. Henry cuts to the outside. Derrick Henry will come up just short of the first down. Key block from Nate Davis taking out that left side for Tennessee. And I just talked about it when the Bengals were on the field about how they need to keep the running game or get the running game going with Joe Mixon. And they showed some consistency there with it and it took them right down the field. And the Tennessee Titans need to do the same thing. You see the big gain on first down for Derrick Henry. As Mike Vrabel told Evan at halftime, they've got to get some first downs and stay on the field. Extra offensive lineman, it's Aaron Brewer. First down run for Derrick Henry. Have you seen any difference in Henry, the one that we normally see, other than uh, we haven't seen the big explosive run yet, but in his style? I haven't seen anything in his style. I haven't seen a limp. I haven't seen any type of uh, uh, hesitation on his part. I've seen a lot of DJ Reader in the backfield. Yes, I've seen yes. a lot of the Cincinnati defenders dialing in and focused on him. But uh, from a health standpoint, he, he looks fine. He looks like they're going to continue to give him the ball. And as I said, I don't think I don't think you get away from him because you never know that one time he could all of a sudden break it for a big game. 
Tennessee, one of four teams that have been in the playoffs each of the last three years. Kansas City, Buffalo, Green Bay, the others. Longer streaks for two of the other teams. Henry again, they're just going to feed it to him until Cincinnati proves that they can stop it. Chunks of yards, that's good for nine. Downstairs to Evan. Guys, it's important to remember when this injury occurred, October 31st, week eight, he had surgery on that right foot. November 2nd, a steel plate and five screws in that foot to get him ready. A ton of work to get to this point. No doubt about it. Henry's going to get a breather here, so Deontay Foreman will step in. Joe Walker Award winner back in 2016 out of the University of Texas. Big run. Breaks a tackle. Foreman still going. Deontay Foreman dealing with waves of tacklers and he's finally brought down. Mike Hilton helps save the touchdown. It's a 54-yard rip for Foreman. I am the perfect time for Deontay Foreman to break off the longest run of his season. Coming into this game, only 35 yards was his longest run. He's able to break through tackles, get to that next level spin out of tackles and just create space put that hand on the ground excellent job by Foreman. line of scrimmage is the 10 boy do the titans need that Tannehill shotgun knocked up in the air intercepted mike hilton's got it and Tannehill goes back to tackle him what a spectacular play by mike hilton he taps it up in the air and secures it for the pick. Mike Hilton is coming on, on a blitz off of the right slot, and it's right where Ryan Tannehill wants to throw the football. There is a flag on the play. Right where he wants to throw the football. Good discipline by Hilton, able to tip the ball in the air and make the interception. Here's the penalty. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on Cincinnati number 20. For taunting, it's a 15-yard penalty from the end. First down, Cincinnati. And that's number 20's first foul towards a disqualification. All right, so the play stands for Mike Hilton. The penalty is against Eli Apple for taunting. But Cincinnati takes over. Mike Hilton knocked upstairs. And then Hilton secures it. Mike Hilton was signed from Pittsburgh to make plays like that. A four-year, $24 million deal. Cincinnati takes over, first down of the 24. Tannehill's first pass of the game was intercepted. His first pass of the second half intercepted. Running play. Joe Mixon gets wrestled down by Jeffrey Simmons. Let's take a look at Next Gen Stats, powered by AWS. Well, what the Tennessee Titans have been doing up front is it's mainly four-man rushes, and, and they're able to put pressure with that. You get stunts and twists that provide some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and really Simmons, the, the job that he's been doing on identity that has been uh, been outstanding for the Titans, getting the sacks and the pressure. Right now, Joe Burrow's been sacked six times already on the game. And Trent David Long Jr. is back in there for Tennessee. Second down to nine. Toss it to Chase, trying to create after the catch. Kane tackled. They'll pick up three yards on the outside. Well, and you wonder if that's a that's a built-in side adjust or a built-in look that the Bengals have going into this, is if you see cover zero, you see the blitz, you see man-to-man, -man, and you have off coverage, just go ahead and throw the quick hitter, get the ball to the outside. Get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Maybe they can make somebody miss and turn a short game into a big game. The one thing that really struck me in our conversations with the Bengals, anytime I asked about last week and the intensity and playoffs, everybody answered, no, it, it felt normal. It felt well, like they, week eight. Well, well they, 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 they didn't want to over-celebrate. Listen, they know it's 31 years since a postseason win. They didn't want to over- they, they understand there's more at play here. Burrow's pass got knocked out of the hands of Higgins. Looked like he had a first down. But he could not hold on to it. Amani Hooker with the tag. Fourth down. Well, Hooker on the touchdown run by Mixon got out of position. This time he comes up. He sees the slant. Watch him put the shoulder, that right shoulder, 
right on the football of Higgins. Excellent job knocking the ball loose. Big play for the defense to stop Cincinnati there and get the ball back. Kevin Huber on to punt it. And, I, and that's, that's huge because of the turnover that just happened. You know, the Tennessee moved all the way down the field to the 10-yard line. And the interception happens in the defense to respond this way, getting the offense the ball back. Again, no rush. Rodgers twirl down on special teams. Trey Flowers downfield, 42-yard punt. You're watching the Intuit TurboTax Live AFC Divisional on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon, the official 5G network of the NFL. And by Royal Caribbean, rise to the vacation, come seek. Here at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, these fans were shell-shocked after the interception by Mike Hilton. Taunting penalty on Eli Apple brought them back. But Cincinnati couldn't do anything with it. Tennessee takes over at the 28. Derrick Henry driving through a crowd for a gain of four and a half. Combination of B.J. Hill and Von Bell bring him to the turf. Tennessee's the number one seed in the AFC. 2000, they lost in the divisional to Baltimore. 2008, as the one seed, lost in the divisional to Baltimore. Henry's carried. Well, it looks like that initial spot's going to be just short. Well, and not that he's running any harder than he did in the first half, but if you look at the way this offensive line is playing in the second half, you know, they, they've missed a lot of games together also, and, and Ryan Tannehill talked to us about that and said, having the offensive line back, the energy, you can feel the juice. I'm sure at halftime, Mike Vrabel got after that offensive line and said, listen, we need to get the run game going. So, so far in this half, they have been able to get the run game going and get Derrick Henry going. And Trent, Derrick Henry was on top of a defender before he went down to the ground. The defender carried him for an extra yard, enough for the first down. We're under four minutes to go on the third. 16-6, Cincinnati. Fake it. Tannehill has the time. Deep shot. Caught. A.J. Brown. Inside the 25. When Ryan Tannehill goes to throw this, I'm thinking, oh, no, it's going to be intercepted because on the back side, Eli Apple is falling. Now watch, Eli Apple goes over the top. Tannehill is aware of that, so he throws a flat throw. Watch how he keeps the ball low. He keeps it a flat throw so that A.J. Brown can go up and get it instead of throwing that high arcing deep pass where the backside corner and Eli Apple can go make the interception. He makes a flat throw and allows A.J. Brown to go up and get it in front of Apple. It was Apple and Elugier. Henry got hit right in the midsection. Logan Wilson there defensively. It's a one-yard pickup. Wilson is coming off a 12-tackle performance in the victory over Las Vegas. Tennessee's going to make some personnel changes here. Hilliard will check in. It looked like Foreman would be in there. Right. They, they took Henry out put Foreman in, then all of a sudden Hilliard. So there must be something specific here for Hilliard that they want him in on this play. Second down and nine. Motion man, Ferkser. We approach two minutes to go in the third. Tannehill looks, throws a roller. Incomplete behind A.J. Brown. Ryan Tannehill knows the Cincinnati head coach Zach Taylor very well. They spent a lot of time together at Texas A&M and with the Miami Dolphins. Tannehill said Taylor is a heck of a person and a coach. He owes a lot of his early growth to him. And Zach Taylor echoed the same sentiments. He really enjoyed working with Tannehill, getting to know him. And the two have formed a very close friendship. They text a lot during the season. I'm not sure there was a lot of back and forth this not, week. Not a lot of back and forth this week. I mean, consider the four years at Texas A&M together. You know, Tannehill switched over from being a wide receiver to a quarterback and, and the work that they did there. And then all of a sudden, they're together with the Miami Dolphins. And as that growth continues, he's been there those early stages for Ryan Tannehill. And it was great to hear the way they expressed that to each other. Well, that was going to be a delay of game. So they had to 
take the timeout as the clock was about to hit zero. It'll be third and nine for Tennessee. Well, and that's where the errant throw to A.J. Brown on second down. If you get that ball in front of him, he may not get the first down, but at least it's going to be third and two, third and three, as opposed to that ball tipping up. I don't know about you, Ian. I held my breath. Anytime that ball gets tipped up in the middle of the field, you know, there's a big risk of getting intercepted. So Titans lucky to hang on to this football and have a chance here on third and long. Is it a timeout that they will need later? It's irrelevant right now. They needed it at this moment. Third down and nine. Four receivers set. Tannehill tosses. Kill you. And well short of a first down. Hit by the combination of Pratt and Wilson. They pick up six yards. Field goal unit will come on. The former Bengal Randy Bullock for Tennessee. Great disguise by Lou Anarumo's defense. They had everybody at the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was going to be cover zero. At A.J. Brown on a slant. That's where Tannehill wanted to go. Was the backside one-on-one. -on -one. But at the snap of the ball, the Bengals dropped everybody out except for their four standard rushers and took away all those passing lanes so they had to hit the check down. Bullock spent five years with the Bengals, and he drills this 34-yarder as Tennessee inches closer. Now down by seven. 136 to play in the third. On the Thursday night before Super Bowl 56, the NFL's brightest stars will be recognized for the best plays and moments from the 2021 season. Tune in to NFL Honors Thursday, February 10th, 9 p.m. Eastern on ABC, ESPN Plus, and NFL Network. Titans went 7-2 at home this season, losses to Arizona in the season opener and that shocking loss to Houston. Meanwhile, Cincinnati, very confident road team. They finished five and three, but you may want to take that last game out of the equation. They were five and two and then sat their starters in the final game against Cleveland. So confident road squad with Joe Burrow leading the way for Cincinnati. Well, and that's the one thing that, that players and coaches talk about with Joe Burrow is confidence and how his confidence carries over to the other players that are in the huddle, on the sideline, in the locker room with him is that leadership and, and his skill level. Returnable here for Evans. He goes right through the middle. And finally taken down as he crosses the 40-yard line. Outstanding field position. Evans is new to this kick return job, and it's working out. They got the youngster Joe Burrow, the veteran Ryan Tannehill, and Burrow has certainly looked the part. 21 of 29, 270 yards. He's taken his lump, six sacks. Tannehill, nine of 17, 137 yards, two interceptions, and one sack for the Cincinnati D. Bengals allowed the third most sacks in the league this year behind Chicago and Baltimore. They're gonna go with an extra offensive lineman here from the 40-yard line. P. Ryan in the backfield. Fake and throw. Off the hands of P. Ryan. It's there. Tennessee with the interception of Monty Hooker. That ball was about to hit the ground, and Hooker slides in under it. Tremendous pitch. Obviously, they're going to take a look at it to see if it hits the ground. Let's keep an eye on that ball. Ooh. It doesn't look like it touches the ground, Ian. And if it does touch the ground, it looks like he has, he has the ball secure. It maybe brushes the ground, but the ball doesn't move. And that's what they're looking for is movement by the ball. The Bengals don't do a lot of big sets. See how the cone of the ball hits, but you don't see the ball move. Trent, you just said it. You hold your breath when balls get tipped. And that one... Up for grabs for Hooker. The previous play is under review. Well, and the Bengals don't do a lot of extra offensive linemen and multiple tight ends and one back, one wide receiver type of looks. And they went with the play action and tried getting it up the field instead hitting the check down. And we're going to listen to Gene Steratore here about whether this stays an interception or does it get overturned. Go ahead, Gene. 
Yeah, it's a really tight play, guys, as we all know. And I think what I'm looking at is to see if when possession is gained by Hooker, does the ball contact the ground simultaneous with that possession? If that's the case, then I believe they'll overturn this to incomplete. He, if he's controlling the football just before that ball hits the ground, then I would say that it's going to stay as an interception. But to me, it looks as if that ball is making contact with the ground simultaneous with his possession of the football. And in that case, the ground is helping him make that interception. Really tight play, though. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a drag of the football. And Hooker got his hands on the ball. Gene, you and I have gotten along so well all season long, and now, and now we got different. We got very, we got very opinions here. Listen, I, I'm going to go with you more than I go with myself, but I, I don't see the ball move a lot there. So that simultaneous possession I I, with the ball hitting the ground, that's that's a factor yeah. that I didn't look at. The, the thing I was looking at was was movement of the football. And I agree with you 100 percent, Trent. I mean, it, look, as soon as Hooker uh, puts hands on the ball, it's it's instant possession, right? But if that ground is part of that process when it happens, then we have to say that we, we can't discount the fact that the ball's touching the ground there. Correct. But I agree with you. The ball doesn't move. He sticks it. He definitely sticks the catch. I like I like that answer better, Gene. Thank you. <laughs> uh, for a moment. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm trying to right. work. With I know, you, I know. I appreciate yeah. it. I thought we were going to have to bring in mediation, but it, it feels like you two worked it out. Well, there's a lot of to listen. Cleet's still on the headset talking to New York. He's still looking at the pictures over and over. So even as Gene and I are going back and forth about this, there's obviously even more discussions going on with the officials and what's happening in New York. I think the other part of this, guys, too, is remember now the ruling on the field's interception, right? So you've got to go into the clear and obvious to overturn that. So that element will play as they're making this decision as well. Uh, but to me, I think the ground is there right when contact occurs, and, and then that's going to be the decision up to New York naturally. Yeah, and, and part of this now, it's been a long process, which means they might be looking at the clock. And if they are overturning it, they got to get the clock straightened out, make sure they've got that right, because it would be an incomplete pass. This has taken an extended period of time. This is not open and shut. Oh, yeah, look at it. Interception, there's, let's move on. There's a lot of factors, and this is, this is a huge turn of events in this game if it does stay an interception. After review, the ruling on the field stands as wow. called. The first down, Tennessee. So a long back and forth. It is an interception. And it's Amani Hooker with a pivotal play at the 119 mark of the third. We asked Joe Burrow about the last five games, no turnovers. He told us, hey, sometimes things bounce your way. Nothing out of the norm. We're just taking care of the ball. And meanwhile, Tennessee has got it because the ball bounced the other way to the Titans. Handoff, Derrick Henry hit in the backfield, Sam Hubbard. One last comment from Gene Steratore. You heard the final decision, Gene. Yeah, and what you think in these plays is they would obviously have deemed that possession had occurred just before that football hit the ground. And, and we know when we get into replays, these are frame by frame evaluations. And in New York's opinion, I am sure that they have felt that there was possession just before the ball made contact to the ground. And that's why they stayed with the call on the field. It was an absolutely fantastic play from Hooker. And a jump. Well, and just to piggyback Gene's comments. Full start, offense number 60, five-yard penalty, still second down. The other reality of it is it's happening in real time, and, and a lot of times you're looking at that replay over and over again in real time, and that, that's one of the things that they talk to us about is, is, yeah, you can take it frame by frame and go super slow motion and all those kinds of things, but then you also go back and look at it in real time, and you know, Gene with a great point. If it's simultaneous catch, then it's... Then it's not. Then it's going to be overturned. If they felt like he had control and the ball didn't move, but right now it's Tennessee's ball and they've got great field position. First interception and 210 pass attempts from Burrow. Second and 16 after the penalty on Jones. Tannehill looking for an all touchdown. AJ Brown. Tremendous grab. Tremendous grab by A.J. Brown, but a tremendous throw by Ryan Tannehill. 
He's got a Wouzier on the outside. Just a little stutter and go. Just enough for Wouzier to settle. But that back shoulder throw so Bell can't get to it. And then the control by Brown to come up with. It's a one-handed grab. He didn't even have use of his right hand on him. He cradles that right in. Great ball placement. Even better catch. Phenomenal. 33 yards, a strike from Tannehill. And the extra point from Bullock is good. We are all tied up. 16 apiece with 15 seconds to play in the third quarter. What a turn. Well, just think of all of what's happened here. So you get you get the long drive by the Titans, and then they get down to the 10 yard line, and they have the tip ball by Hilton gets intercepted, and then their defense gets a stop, so they get the ball back. And then they're able to get another drive and get stopped. But then Burrow with the controversial interception, the Titans take advantage of it and tie this thing up right at the end of the third quarter. Joe Burrow's record has been so clean over the last month and change. And that turnover leads to points for Tennessee. Knotted up at 16 apiece. Bullock to kick it off. Evans is deep at the five. Return from Evans from the goal line. Tackled across the 20 by Chris Jackson of the Titans. Nine seconds to go in the third. Another look at the hooker pick. Officials took a look at it. Discussion with New York. Determined that was the correct call. And then the suction cup of A.J. Brown. A one-arm grab as he was backpedaling into the end zone. Cincinnati with a first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Burrow over the middle, soft toss to Uzama. They were digging at the ball, forward progress will get him a gain of seven and that's it. End of the third in Nashville. A spot in the AFC Championship game is on the line. Will it be who day? Will it be tighten up? We'll find out next. Cincinnati Bengals trying to go to the AFC Championship game for the first time since 1988. Tennessee Titans were there a couple of years ago, a loss to Kansas City. One quarter of play to decide it here in Nashville. High and Eagle, Trent Green, Evan Washburn, Gene Steratore, the rest of our NFL on CBS crew. First play of the fourth quarter, Cincinnati has a second and three. Handoff, Mixon, cut to the outside. He's got some room to work. And Mixon turns on the Jets. Veers out of bounds, picks up 13 in the process. Watch the seal that happens here in the bounce outside by Mixon. Excellent job and vision, but then blocking on the edge and then Chase with the final block that picks up the first down. Good job of vision by Mixon. Better job of blocking by the guys up front. And Trent, they had an extra offensive lineman on that play, Jackson Carmen, and it worked. The running game has picked up in the second half for Cincinnati. First down, fake it, toss, catch by Chase, breaks a tackle. Chase working the sideline, ducks out of bounds. We asked Jamar Chase about those kinds of plays, and he said the key on catch and run, it requires vision, instincts, and making that first defender miss. You beat that first tackler, and then you can make some things happen. Well, and Mike Vrabel said the same thing. We said, what's the key to the defense? What is the key or what are one of the keys? He said, we can't have missed tackles because he knew the short pass plays and Jamar Chase and what he's able to do 
you can't have those missed tackles. And excellent job by Chase making the first guy miss and turning it up the field. Three catches, 82 yards for the rookie out of LSU. Burrow on the break of cracking 300. Play clock. The chest beat it. Running play fools nobody. Joe Mixon hit by Zach Cunningham. It's a loss of one on the play. Well, that time the Titans bring seven guys up to or near the line of scrimmage to get some penetration and we've seen a lot of that in the first half runs for no gain but you got to stick with it which is what they've been doing which is setting up some of the other bigger plays that they've been able to get second and 11 just underway here in the fourth quarter Cincinnati is in Tennessee territory just shy of the 40 Burrow Pumped and throw. Tosses it out there for Chase. Again, doesn't go down on that first contact. Carries a defender with him. It's Landry. Versatile defender at that. Eight yards. Catch and run. Ryan, did you see the quick pump fake to the left and then Burrow looking down the field? It's because the Titans showed that cover zero look again. And what they've done the previous times is they've thrown that quick ball to Jamar Chase. That time he does a quick pump fake, thought he was going to get Higgins because he thought the defense would react to that pump fake, thought he was going to get Higgins down the sideline, but they didn't. They continued to bail out, which is why he had to come back to chase for the short game. Burrow is now at 306 yards through the air. Third down and three. Rush is coming. Burrow tries to avoid it. Cannot! Burrow! Brought down! Landry first man, then Bud Dupree to finish him off. And it takes Cincinnati out of field goal range. Six guys at the line of scrimmage and only five in protection. So you've got every one of these guys coming in. You can't block everybody with only five-man protection. You've got to get the ball out of your hands. He does not. He makes the first guy miss. But not able to make, it, make the second guy miss as Dupree gets the sack and knocks him out of field goal range. It's a loss of 16. The seventh sack of the day for the Tennessee defense. The rush is coming in sheets. Huber, no pressure to deal with. He pops it high in the air. Rodgers, fair catch called for in between the 17 and 18 yard line, 31 yard kick. The Titans will have the football and you're watching the Intuit TurboTax Live AFC Divisional on CBS. Unique shots from the game are brought to you by Paramount Plus. At Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, the Bengals 16, the Titans 16. Tennessee with a football at the 17-yard line. Deontay Foreman gets the carry, and he steamrolls across the 25-yard line for a gain of nine. Good block from Saffold. How about the connection Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown have had today? First on the deep corner route that was set up by a previous play. And then the deep ball down the middle on the play action. The Tannehill recognized the fall off corner. And then the touchdown, the one-handed touchdown catch by A.J. Brown. Three catches on the day, 114 yards and one touchdown. Second down and one. Foreman has a 45-yard run here this afternoon. Foreman. First down. Across the 35. We asked Mike Vrabel about Foreman. He said, I watched him mature each week. He doesn't say a whole lot, but his body language shows how much he cares. He won't make the same mistake twice. His preparation is excellent. They have full confidence in him when he's needed to be the featured back. Well, and it really developed over the course of the season, right? It, 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 that confidence built as the season went along, and then all of a sudden towards the end of the season, that's who, that's who they were relying on down the stretch when they won their last three games, when they won four of their last five. It was Foreman they were leaning on. Fake it to Foreman. Tannehill throws it downfield. It's hauled in by A.J. Brown. First down, Tennessee. A rope for 20 yards. Well, it looked like he was trying to get the ball to Julio Jones in the middle of the field. Watch Brown passes Julio Jones, and then, oh, wait, he's scrambling. I'm just going to keep going. 
Sure enough, we just showed the highlight reel of Tannehill and A.J. Brown. If he's in trouble, that's who he's trying to dial up. Four catches, 134 yards, and a touchdown for A.J. Brown. Tennessee in business inside the Cincinnati 45. Tannehill, outside throw, handled by Julio Jones. So now spreading it around. Jones has been a factor here. That covers seven yards. Derrick Henry will check back in for Tennessee. How about the adjustments offensive coordinator Todd Downing has made for the Tennessee Titans? They came out. The offensive line is blocking better. The, off, the, the run game is going better. Both Foreman and Henry are involved in that. And then Tannehill and A.J. Brown, their connection has made a difference here in the second half. They'll put the fullback in. Blasting game. Tannehill, straight back, a rifle underneath to Jones. Very close to a first down, Jermaine Pratt with the wrap-up on the defensive end. Clock is moving, we're down to 8.32 to play in this fourth quarter. Now oh, they're going to have it short, so it's going to be third and less than a yard. Todd Downing in his first year calling the plays for Tennessee. 17th year in the NFL. He was the tight end coach of the Titans. Third down, less than a yard. Shotgun for Tannehill. Fake the handoff. Tannehill devoured. Short of the line to gain. Cam Sample. Well, what that tells me, Ian, no doubt about it, he said he had two downs to get this ball. And, and Anytime you pull that, you see that happen. In my mind, Mike Vrabel had said to Todd Downing, listen, do whatever play it is you want to do to pick up this first down, but if we don't get it and it's close, we're going to go for it on fourth down. Right now, they'd be staring at a 53-yard field goal. It is fourth and one. Henry in the backfield. We approach seven minutes to play in a tie game. Handoff, Henry. He hesitated and Cincinnati flocks to him. Led by Logan Wilson. And the Bengals will take over on downs. A huge stop here in the fourth. The Cincinnati defense holds up. Henry didn't have a chance. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. And by Michelob Ultra. Enjoy responsibly. An immense defensive play by the Cincinnati Bengals on Derrick Henry on fourth and one. The Bengals take over first and ten. At the Cincinnati 37. Burrow looks and Burrow is dropped. Sack after sack after sack. And it's Harold Landry. A loss of seven. Once again, excellent penetration by the Titans in the middle of the line. As a quarterback, you want room to step up in the middle. There hasn't been room for Joe Burrow to step up in the middle of your pocket. It's one thing to get beat off the edge is where you have room to step up, but he doesn't have any room to step up. Yet another sack for the Titans defense. That is eight of them tonight for Tennessee. Second down and 17 for the Bengals. Burrow step and throw. Higgins catches and creates after the catch across the 40-yard line. Chase has gotten so much attention this year, and rightfully so. T. Higgins had a fantastic season, nearly 1,100 yards receiving, and down the stretch in particular, over the last seven games of the season, he averaged 107 and a half yards per game receiving. Well, he is such a big playmaker. His speed and his size is such an advantage, and when the team started to focus so much on Jamar Chase, it opened things up even more for Higgins, and they were able to take advantage of it. Third down and four. Under six minutes to go. Burrow. Got a first down to Uzama. 
to midfield. They pick up seven. How about the fact and the respect that the Titans are showing Jamar Chase? There was four receivers to the left, one to the right. The one to the right was Jamar Chase. They had a corner and a safety over the top of him on the other side with four receivers, only four defenders. So it was a matter of man-to-man -man coverage on one side, and we're not going to let Jamar Chase beat us deep on the other. Joe Burrow is 26 of 35, 326 yards, and a pick. Tennessee pointing in Cincinnati's direction. Flag flies. Full start. Offense number 28. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's Joe Mixon. Mike Vrabel locked in a battle with Zach Taylor. The Titans and the Bengals tied at 16 apiece. It's a franchise playoff record for the Tennessee defense with those eight sacks. Well, they had some really great defenses with Jeff Fisher here. So that's a heck of a record to get for the Titans. Chris Evans is now in there for Cincinnati. And the officials will come together. Play clock was down to four. The clock is correct at five minutes and eight seconds. Here we go. All right. Thank you for the confirmation, Cleet. <laughs> Coming up after the game, State Farm Post Game Show, JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower. They'll have the highlights for you, conversation all coming up, State Farm Post Game Show. First and 15 for Cincinnati. Operating out of the gun. Running play, Evans. He's hit at the 49, gains four. Good block from Trey Hopkins up front. Clock is rolling. We're under five minutes to play. Well, and the Bengals continually have to, to fight through some of their mistakes. And they came into this game giving up the most sacks in the NFL. They've given up eight today, but they have been a very low penalized team, one of the least penalized teams in the NFL. And right now they've got six penalties already on the day. And Instead of first and 10, they have first and 15. So now they get themselves back to at least the manageable down here at second and 10. Only Green Bay had fewer penalties than Cincinnati this season. Second and long. Burrow has the time, delivers underneath. And Joe Mixon met immediately by David Long. It's a gain of three. Well, Mixon's not happy about something. He jumped up after that tackle by Long and, and had a word with the officials. I thought it was a good response by Long to come up and make that tackle, not allow him to get anything after it. And... Donovan McNabb won a playoff game. Went sacked eight or more times. Joe Burrow trying to join him in that category. A critical third and eight. Burrow dropped again. It's an onslaught. And Jeffrey Simmons has been the man. Nine sacks for the Tennessee defense. Well, the problem is there's no quick throws. All the receivers are up the field. So on some of these pressures and blitzes, there's not a flat or a quick pop to a tight end or an outside receiver with a one-step slant. It's up the field. It's up the field. It's 10 yards, 15 yards, 60 yards down the field. If that's the situation, you've got to hang on to the ball a long time, and that's what Burroughs had to do. Thus the nine sacks by the Titans. And that's three individually from Simmons. Huber, sailing kick. Rogers hit right away at the 15-yard line by Flowers, who has done an excellent job in coverage. 43-yard kick. Buffalo, Kansas City. That's the other divisional matchup. We'll have it for you here on CBS tomorrow. Big game at Arrowhead with the Bills and the Chiefs. We still have 2.43 to go in regulation here in Nashville and coming down to the wire with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Tennessee Titans tied at 16. Well, and Ian, as, as you've mentioned a number of times, if Tennessee wins this game, they get to host their first AFC championship game. And 
if Cincinnati wins the game, that game tomorrow takes on a whole new meaning because they'll be the ones hosting the AFC Championship game. A.J. Brown, motion man. First down run. Henry trying to get to the outside. Trying the stiff arm. While Wuzie hangs in there and limits Henry to a gain of three. Did you see Henry loading that arm? It looked like he was getting ready to load it, and Wuzie saw it as well. And he kind of gave a little hesitate. Like when he went after him, he went, and then he kind of hesitated, and then went back him again, trying, maybe trying to get the pump fake on the stiff arm. Derrick Henry in his return to the lineup, 62 yards rushing and a touchdown. Second and seven. We're counting down to the two-minute mark. And no sense of urgency here for Tennessee. Two-minute warning. Cincinnati and Tennessee all tied up as the pressure mounts in Nashville. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Direct TV Stream. Get your TV together. And by Taco Bell's Delivery Meal for Two, because cravings are better shared. Joe Burrow's been sacked nine times. It ties an NFL playoff record, which has been done five times. Tennessee has two minutes to work with here, a second and seven at its own 19-yard line. Fake the handoff, Tannehill, a bullet to Julio Jones, first down to the 35. Excellent job by Tannehill as, as Hendrickson is slow to get up in the backfield. They're going to stop. Looks like he's, the fact he's unbuckling with that right hand tells me that's got to be his left arm. Yep. Trey Hendrickson was a question mark after suffering a concussion last week. With an injured player inside of two minutes. The situation requires he's got to be charged with a team timeout. It will be their first timeout. Didn't look like anything unusual in the no. back and forth that he had going with Luan. Trey Hendrickson has been terrific this season. Randy Bullock trying to get into the right mental space for a potential field goal to either give Tennessee the lead or possibly for a win. So the injury for Cincinnati costs the Bengals a timeout. Well, and the injury to Hendrickson takes away the fact of the throw that Tannehill made to squeeze that in between two linebackers to Julio Jones, and what an accurate throw when needed here in the final two minutes to drive it up the field. Hendrickson set a team record, 14 sacks for the Bengals. First down, Tennessee at the 35. Henry, no gain, stonewalled. D let me guess. DJ Reader. Yep. <laughs> let me guess. DJ Reader. You could just let me uh, set it. <laughs> you knew I was going to say uh, it. I know. I just looked. I said, is it going to be? Exactly. 98's been in the backfield all day, not letting Henry get anywhere. That's the one thing that's been missing in this game from Derrick Henry's game. The longest run of the day for him is nine. How many times have we seen him wear teams down and then in the fourth quarter get that big, long run? But so far, Cincinnati's been able to hold him in check. Second and ten. Hilliard in there for the Titans. Tannehill makes the connection at the 40-yard line, and it will be a gain of five for Hilliard. And you have another injured Bengal on the play. It's Cam Sample, who's going to make his way to the Cincinnati sideline. We're down to 40 seconds left here in the fourth. Third down and five at the 40. Hendrickson is back in there for the Bengals. Tannehill steps forward. Popped up in the air. Intercepted. Logan Wilson's got it for Cincinnati with 20 seconds to play. A huge play for the Bengals' D. 
Excellent job by Eli Apple. He doesn't bite on it at all. He sits on the route, comes back, gets that right arm in there to tip the ball up in the air. Logan Wilson with his fifth interception on the season. Right place, right time. That's what happens when you hustle to the ball. He's right there for the interception. Giving the Bengals excellent field position with 20 seconds to go. So that pass was intended for Westbrook Aquina. It was up for grabs, secured by Cincinnati. With 20 seconds left, the Bengals take over. Two timeouts, I am two timeouts, so you can use the whole field here. Burrow, deep drop, step and throw. Lays it up there for Jamar Chase. And they're already in field goal range with 15 seconds to play. Jenkins in press coverage. He has help over the top. He's just trailing him. He favors him to the inside, thinking he's going to make an inside move. Instead, Chase goes to the outside. Perfectly thrown ball. And when they needed protection most, Joe Burrow had protection. He had time in the pocket to wait for that move at the top and get it to the boundary for the completion. Right now, they'd be looking at a 52-yard attempt. 15 seconds on the clock. Running play. Mixon carries the pile for two. Down to six seconds left. Timeout called. Cincinnati takes its second timeout. Please put nine seconds on the game clock. Nine. State Farm postgame show is coming up. JB and the gang back in New York. A thriller here in Nashville. And a rookie, Evan McPherson, could be the hero. Well, they had two timeouts, 79 so it's 79, 79 eligible. We're bringing in that extra offensive line. I mean, you were thinking, was gonna, or I was thinking they were just going to wind it down and kick the field goal, but with two timeouts, you can call it, get another run play in. Tread the crazy thing, Zach Taylor was trying to call timeout on the play where Cincinnati came away with the interception. He's, He's running, running here at the top of the screen. And they end up getting the pick. This will be a 30-second timeout. The third interception of the day for Ryan Tannehill. Nine seconds on the clock. The Cincinnati Bengals got their first playoff win in 31 years last week against Las Vegas. This would be their first road win in franchise history in the postseason. Tennessee trying to host the AFC Championship game for the first time in its team's history. Well, it's important to note two of the three interceptions by Tannehill were balls that were tipped up in the air and intercepted. Right now, it would be a 50-yard attempt. And Cincinnati not taking any chances. Clock stops. Three seconds left. That's actually going to go down as a loss on the play. Please put four seconds on the game clock. Four seconds. Evan McPherson has been perfect on the road this season. A fifth round pick out of the University of Florida. Cincinnati takes its third and final timeout. And he's been a crunch time performer. Four seconds on the clock. 52 yard attempt. Nick Fearson trying to kick the Bengals into the AFC Championship. Harris, the snapper. Huber will hold it. 52-yarder! Sweeps the leg, McPherson! He's got it! Cincinnati wins! They are going to the AFC Championship game for the first time since 1988. The Bengals' mantra has been, why not us? And they're right. 1916, the final in Nashville.